so in this video we will study uh, the stability analysis uh, that means from the transfer function by looking into the poles and zeros of the transfer function we will find out whether the system is stable or not and what is stable that means the if if, it, if a normal system is running and you're getting some disturbance and the output again come back to the original position that is called stable system or if the output is not able to control then it is called unstable systems so i start this video by assuming that you know how the systems behave with respect to poles that means if the poles are located at the left half of the s plane or complex plane then then i can say the system is stable systems or if the systems i mean the if the poles are located at the right half of the s plane or at least any single pole are located at the right half of s plane then i can say it is a unstable systems and likewise so to start that i have opened the matlab 2009 then i'll go to the simulink once i click simulink the simulink library opens then i'll get a, a new work window what i do i just uh, I just want a transfer function which will which i'll get from the simulink window and continuous window and here from this transfer function i'm clicking this and drag it out over here and you're having different ways to take these things the transfer function what you will need i also need a step signal or you can go for the uh, signals I and mean source then you can get a step signal from here yeah step signal because for testing purpose we need the step signal because we have different type of uh, signal like uh, step signal ramp signal parabolic signal and impulse signal if you see the impulse are starting from zero and end in zero there is no continuous from other infinity that means if you do not know the value of say, input signal at infinite time then how could you predict the system similarly if you go for a ramp or parabola you know what is the input that is zero but at the end what will happen you have no control of the input you will go to uh, go to end go to infinite so that these three signals cannot be used for test signal but for step signal you know the input and the starting point position is zero and end is one that means it is bounded input and bounded output that is why step signal is used for a test signal okay and to see the output what i need i just need uh i just need a, a what a scope okay i just need a scope clear so this is my scope clear okay I, what i do here i just open this thing zoom it so that you can see it clearly okay. so i just connect these three block together and you can see we already known that the denominator of the transfer function if you equate to zero this is called characteristic equation that means s plus one is equal to zero is my characteristic equation so if you do that and you can see s value will becomes minus one that means there is a pole which is located at the left side of the s plane once you run this and if you see the scope we can see that whatever the value will be it will be actually getting stable okay because already disturbance will happen and uh, at one i mean the step starts from one and once you give the input it will give it will change the value and reaches to a perfect value at one and continue from there so it is stable systems it const remain constant okay so what how to change the transfer function if you click this you can see a block over here numerator coefficients and denominator coefficients here coefficients are given 
okay in the square bracket if you increase the number of coefficient likewise your transfer function changes let's say in denominator instead of writing one space one i write one space one space one so if you apply then you can say it becomes a square plus a plus one okay so it's clear that the right one is the unity place the second one will be the tenth place and third one will be the hundred place likewise so you can say it multiply by s so here s to the power zero s to the power one s to the power two or if you go for one more one you can see it becomes third order equation third order equation that is s cube plus s square plus s plus one likewise you just use your brain to find out these values okay let us see this is the equation 1 by s minus 1 into s minus 2 so if you equate the denominator to 0 we will find one pole is at plus 1 another pole is at plus 2 with the which will be shown here this is my complex plane or s plane and if you go for the multiplication of this denominator s square minus 3s plus 2 is equal to 0 this is my characteristic equation and here it is clear that two right hand pole exist that means the system becomes unstable so what you do you just in denominator of transfer function you write a square minus 3s plus 2 how to write a square minus 3s plus 2 okay so first i need to make it a second order equation so this becomes my second order equation a square and something something then what is my second term that is minus 3s here only s is given so your coefficient is 1 so what you do instead of 1 you make the coefficient as minus 3 okay and if you apply we get a square minus 3s plus 1 and what we need a square minus 3s plus 2 and what you need to do is just uh, replace that last one as 2 so that my transfer function will get as 1 by s square minus 3s plus 2 whose characteristic equation is s square minus 3s plus 2 is equal to 0 and I am getting two poles that is 1 and 2 which will be located at the right outer right half of s plane and we know that whenever the poles located at the right half of s plane the system becomes unstable if you click run and show the scope you can see it starts from 0 or if you go for axis property okay you see it starts from 0 okay but after some time it will go to infinite i have no control in I, y axis i have taken 5 so it does go for 5 let me show you see if it is not 5 let's see this is somewhat 500 okay and if you put apply you can see also at 500 also this is continuing and if you go for 5000 i mean y scale y axis you make from minus 5 to 5000 also you can say this is also continuing that means we could not able to predict what is the output of the system after some time if the poles are located at the right half of a s plane clear you understand this thing next step of two one more equation that is nothing but one by s plus one into s plus two so from this denominator it is clear that s if you equate this to zero you'll get two poles that is s is equal to minus one and s is equal to minus two two left hand poles okay and you'll get if you see the uh, s plane you can get in minus one minus two in left side and you know that when the poles are located at the left side of the transfer function the transfer function becomes stable and this is nothing but my characteristic equation if you multiply this together you get s square plus 3s plus 2 just change it s square plus 3s instead of minus 3 you just make it plus 3 so that will become s square plus 3s plus 2 now you just run it and open the scope and auto scale you can see it actually previously it was zero where i am giving my input as at one and when i give input 
it will change its position and reaches to a particular value here. Once it reaches to a particular value, it remains constant throughout. So if you get confused, let me change my axis property to x is equal to instead of uh, um, let's go for 5. Okay, my y axis scale range from minus 5 to 5. And if you plot apply, you can see this clearly. It starts from here, it starts from 0. And when it reaches 1, it changes its value and reaches to some value here. Or if you want to go for more clear thing, so just go for 1 here. Clear now? And it is, let's say, minus 0 0.5 to 1. Clear? Starting from 0 and reaches here at 0 0.5 and remain constant throughout. Clear? Yes or no? And you can see x is 10 seconds. What happened after 10 seconds? Yes, I have run it for 10 seconds, so it is showing 10 seconds. Let me run here for 100 seconds. And if you run this also, you can see after 100 seconds also, it starts from 0. Okay, this is a transient time. Okay, this time from 0 to this time, this is called transient time. And after this time, it is called steady state time. Okay, you can see it reaches to constant value and no change. That means after infinite of time, you can say the output is 0 0.5. So you can able to predict the output. That means whenever the poles are the left half of the S planes in this form, then you can see the you can see the system is stable. Okay. Next, if I show you some concept like one by S square plus four, and if I make this one S square plus four equal to zero, that is my characteristic equation, and I found uh, two rules that is S one and S two at plus uh, minus z2 so here ob obviously over the imaginary axis so this system is called marginally stable let us show how to find out this system response so this s square plus 4 how to do it so i need three things 1 1 s square plus 4 na? 1 0 then uh, 4 1 0 then uh, 4 what happening then 4 yes 1 0 then 4 and apply here you can get 1 by s square plus 4 and now run it and when you open this can you see the beautiful image sinusoidal image or if you just uh, go for just 10 seconds let's say you can see clearly okay you are getting some sustained oscillations okay i mean getting some marginally stable system the system is stable between these two boundaries 0 and 0 0.5 aapka aap, aap jo input aapka jo response hoga if you have your systems whenever the poles at uh, imaginary axis and if you are giving the input as step input and you can see the response always lies in between 0 and 0 0.5 it will go it will not go beyond this value so that you can say this uh, this waveform is actually maintain its margin that is why it's called as marginally stable system okay Let me take equations a transfer function like 1 by s square plus 2 s plus 13. So if you equate denominator to 0, so that uh, your characteristic equation becomes s square plus 2 s plus 13. Here I am just taking open loop, okay? And what I used to say, ki, I just made the, I, mean, I just convert the uh, closed loop transfer function to open loop transfer function. So I have given this value. And after finally finding the poles, I can see the poles of this characteristic equation lies in the left half of the S plane. So this becomes a complex conjugate. Okay. 
because minus b is minus 2 plus minus b square is 4 minus 56 or 51 so minus 52 so under root so we obviously get a imaginary complex conjugate number so if you do like this and if you if you multiply I mean if you run these things you can see it will give a sustained oscillation clear it starts from okay here you start from zero then changes its value then go to high peak then come back to low peak then high peak it says a likewise and after some time it get a constant so up to here to here it is called transient period after that it remains steady state we call steady state period okay so you can say this is called peak overshoot okay this is called peak overshoot and this is called peak undershoot this is fast peak overshoot this is fast peak undershoot this is sec peak overshoot second peak overshoot this is called second peak undershoot so this will be you will be getting better understanding whenever i told you the second order transfer function i'll teach you okay so uh, this is for now uh, i hope you understand how to uh, run the matlab um, i mean uh, matlab simulink and how to change the transfer function value and how to show the scope thing so this is for today lecture we'll, i'll meet you with new lecture in the next video thank you very much